Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about the frequency division by an RC controlled stable blocking oscillator. In the previous video I explained you how a 1 to 1 and a 1 to 3 or 1 to 4, 1 is to 4 frequency division can be obtained. 1 is to 1 is nothing but normally we are assuming the TP is less than T0 and when it is like 2 times or 3 times we should assume 2 TP is less than T0 or 3 TP is less than T0 like that. Depending upon the type of synchronization we need, type of frequency division we need, that type of time period we are assuming. Okay. In our case, here for this video, I am going to explain it especially for blocking oscillator. Blocking oscillator which is made up of an stable blocking oscillator which is nothing but an RC controlled blocking oscillator. Mainly the resistance and capacitance controlled blocking oscillator. Blocking oscillator. Okay, so the meaning of this RC controlled blocking oscillator is we are using a transformer. It uses it uses two BJTs, two BJTs, and a transformer, a transformer. Here the two BJTs are nothing but one is in common inhibitor configuration, another one is common collector configuration and whereas a transformer here is used as a load transformer here we are using as a load and the, uh, the output of common emitter is coupled to the common collector through a transformer that is the meaning for the transform transformation from C E to C C and we are using an RC network RC network where the capacitor charging and discharging capacitor charging and discharging will give the output because across the capacitor only we are taking the output for getting the uh, sweep voltage okay this is about the background of this rc controlled stable blocking oscillator now let us see the circuit diagram how it will be looking like see this is the blocking oscillator where q2 is connected in common emitter configuration and q1 is connected in common collector configuration why it is common collector? See the collector is common between the input and output. And in the first case, Q2 is connected in common emitter configuration where it is common between input and output. Okay. Now, previously we have given a negative uh, triggering pulse or a negative sync pulse, but now we are giving a positive going signal. The positive peak sync input we are giving. See here, we have to understand that here also we are giving negative pulses to the common collector transistor input but because of this transformer it transforms the input from this winding to the secondary winding first winding and secondary winding primary winding to the secondary winding with a phase shift of 180 degrees the phase shift between the primary winding to the secondary winding is 180 degrees see here it is here dot and here it is a dot. So that uh, the phase shift of 180 degrees will be accomplished from 1 to 2. That's why even if we are giving a positive going sync input that will be appeared at the input of this base as a negative going pulse because of this 180 degrees phase shift between 1 to 2. Hope you understand. Okay. Now assume a condition let it be the transistor we are, as we are giving a positive going pulse that means the transistor Q2 on. Q2 on. So the output will be reaching to this capacitor. As this particular transistor is in on state, the capacitor takes the voltage as the input. Now these pulses will reach this collector and they will be moving to the secondary winding with a phase shift of 180 degrees. So here it appears a positive peak pulse. This positive peak will be applied to the base so that the transistor set will be in on state. Okay, initially Q2 is in on state and that makes the Q1 also in on state. As Q1 is in on state, the capacitor C1, <coughs> capacitor C1, C, it charges like this. C1 charges. Capacitor C1 charges. Okay, so uh, this is a uh, 
capacitor C1 charges. Next, when the transistor, when the capacitor completely reaches the maximum voltage, then the voltage across capacitor <coughs> and the input voltage, phase voltage, that makes the transistor Q1 comes into off state. Q1 comes into off state because the voltage across capacitor slowly increases, increases, and that makes this junction voltage from here to here. That makes this junction voltage. Here it is negative. Here it is negative. Here we are giving positive supply that comes here as a negative 180 degrees phase shift. Negative. That negative and this VBB. VBB is some positive voltage like 5 volts or 10 volts depending upon the peak value. Then that remaining voltage will be applied onto this junction voltage. So the junction is coming on and so that the capacitor is charging up to this VCC because in this particular path we are having VCC. Capacitor tries to charge up to VCC. But as long as the voltage across this particular transistor cutting voltage is more than the voltage across capacitor, then transistor comes into off. So when Q1 off, what happens is C1, C1 discharges, discharges through resistance R1. So charging is done through this VCC, through the on transistor and R and C1, but discharges through the R1. So as long as the capacitor discharges, it can discharge up to a maximum voltage of VBB minus V gamma. <laughs> it can discharge up to a maximum voltage of VBB minus V gamma. See, V gamma is the cutting voltage from here to here, and VBB is this one. Okay, whenever it reaches the cutting voltage VBB minus V gamma, automatically again the transistor comes into on state and capacitor continuously charges. This is the general way. Now, we are taking a synchronization pulse, a pulse waveform such that after four pulses, it meets the discharging path. See, from TP, from here to here, from here to here, in the first cycle, the char capacitor charges. As I mentioned, as the Q1 is in on state, capacitor charges. But when it reaches the maximum voltage V1, this V1 is more for the transistor to turn off because it breaks down the junction voltage. Then the transistor turns off and automatically capacitor discharges through R1. This is the discharging path. Okay. <coughs> when actually it has to discharge up to this period, it has to discharge up to this period, which is T0. T0 is the original oscillation period. But what happens? Prematurely, prematurely, we are applying a negative pulse. We are applying a pulse which is sufficient to make the transistor on. Then uh, automatically the transistor comes into on state and the capacitor starts charging prematurely. Okay, it, ha it has to ch discharge up to this value and again starts charging from here onwards. But prematurely we are making all this to happen just a, a time before than this okay that's why t naught is normal old uh, time period of oscillations nothing but before synchronization old is nothing but before synchronization and ts is the new time period of oscillations or we can say after synchronization after synchronization this is before synchronization Okay, so here onwards it continues like that. See the maximum voltage up to the minimum voltage up to which it can discharge is VBB minus V gamma. But this pulse amplitude and this voltage is sufficient to reach this level VBB minus V gamma. And this will be continue like that for, uh, for uh, it will be done for every four cycles of the input signal. Okay. <coughs> So the pulse number 4 occurs at this time and has sufficient amplitude to cause a premature premature firing of the oscillator. Previously it has to charge up to this one, it has to discharge up to this one but prematurely we are from, uh, making the transistor to switch on. This is about the stable blocking oscillator which is done a frequency division by an amount of so showing the frequency division by a factor of 4. 
okay the same can also be applied onto the edge table multi vibrator the same concept can be applied onto the multi vibrators also why only edge table multi vibrator all the mono stable multi vibrator bi stable multi vibrator where that triggering pulses we are applying in that place we can apply sync pulse to get the synchronization with the output waveform and as well as the sync input signal okay thank you